Hello and welcome to Kim's Codex, where today we are going to be discussing the first story ever written that we found so far of Lugal Banda. I was originally going to go with the tale of Gilgamesh, but then I thought, no wait, there's one earlier, and that's the story of this one. Story Scientist Assessment takes place around 2100 BC, although the tablets they found were written approximately 1800 BC. The tablets were in surprisingly good condition compared to other artifacts from that time period, which leads them to think that maybe they were a very valued story. Lugalbanda was the second king of Uruk. His name actually means little fierce king in Sumerian. He wasn't born a king, he was just a regular guy. He was the youngest of eight brothers who were the captains of the then king, Enrikur's army. Now, Enrikur wanted to attack the city of Arata which would be kind of, in modern day perspective, like El Dorado, a fabulously wealthy city in fable. And he wanted to attack the city to get all this wealth and to build up shrines specifically to the gods of Uruk. Now on the way, they had to pass through seven hostile mountain ranges, and in the middle of the wilderness, Lugal Banda got very, very sick, so sick he couldn't hold or anything or even stand. And his brothers decided that they couldn't carry him all the way back to Uruk, and they couldn't carry him them with him to go to Arata to besiege the city, so they left him in a mountain cave and they left all sorts of provisions, but they laid it out almost as if it was a funeral. So they left him his beer and special honey cakes and incense, and they said, if you live, you can come join us, and if not, we'll take your body back with us to Uruk on our way back home. Now, Lugal Banda stays in this mountain cave for two and a half days, deathly sick, can't move, can't even reach over to get the provisions that are right next to him, and then he prays to Utu, god of the sun. And he prays his heart out all day long on the third day, and Utu hears him. And that night he sends Inanna, the goddess of the evening star, also the goddess of battle, and she blesses him with a special comforting light and helps him get into a healthy, healing sleep. Then he sends Suin, the god of the moon, who gives him the strength to stand. And then, with the rising sun, Utu himself comes and banishes the god that made Lugal Banda sick. And then Utu turns the wilderness of the mountains into a lush, verdant paradise. All these life-giving plants grow, and it causes a stream to grow. And Lugal Banda goes out of the cave, and he eats the healthy plants and drinks the water, and he sets traps to hunt animals. And he catches a bull and two goats. And he makes special cakes with the provisions his brothers left him all sweetened with date syrup. And that night, he has a dream where the gods are asking for a sacrifice. So, in the morning he wakes up, he sacrifices the bull and the goats, and he prepares a, a huge feast for the gods. And they come and enjoy the feast, and then they tell Lugobanda to go visit Anzud, a bird god, kind of like a thunderbird. Well, when he goes to visit Anzud's nest in the middle of the mountain wilderness, when he gets there, Anzud isn't home, he's out hunting, but the chick is there. And he feeds the chick what leftover meat from the feast, and some sweet cakes, and the chick is all happy, and he dresses him up, and then he decorates the entire nest, festoons it like it's a god's palace. But when Anzu gets back, he's very pleased to see that his check has been well taken care of and his home all decorated beautifully. And Lugal Banda flatters Anzu and said, I've come to you for protection, I'm lost in the little wilderness. And he said, Anzu was very pleased with Lugal Banda, and he offered him a special reward. And he, first he offered him to send him back to Uruk full of treasure, and Lugal Banda declined. Then he offered to make his arrows as strong as the barbed sunlight, and never miss, and Lugal Banda declined. Then Anzu offered him to make the, him the greatest warrior in every battle. Lugal Banda declined. Then Anzu said, you could have these holy butter churn, which I think would either mean endless food or endless health. I'm not quite sure what holy butter is good for. But once again, Lugal Banda declined, and Anzu started getting a little frustrated. He's like, I want to give you a gift. And he said, well, can you give me the power of running so I can run as fast as I can and never get tired? And Anzu said, cool. So then he flew up high and he found the army of Uruk. He said, they're over there. Lugobanda ran underneath Anzu and found his army. He said, before we go, let me just warn you, don't tell anyone about your good fortune because they might get jealous. And then Anzu flew off to his nest and Lugobanda rejoined the army. And they were very happy to see him. They're like, oh, we gave you up for dead. It's so good to see you back. And they continued and they made it to the city of Arata the next day. Well, they besieged the city for a year and we're not able to make any progress. And finally, Enmerkur, the king, is he's getting tired and frustrated. He's, why can I not win this battle? And Nana sent me to this battle so I could to beautify her shrine. Why is she abandoning me now? 
and he asked her messenger to go back to Uruk to visit Inanna at her, in her home to ask how he could win this battle. And he went and talked to all the armies, and no one would volunteer. And finally, after no one stepped forward, Lugo Benda said, I will go, but I will have to go alone. And the king said, why are you going alone? Through these dangerous mountain paths, if you go alone, you'll never be seen again. And Lugo Benda said, I'll, I'll go back to Uruk, but I have to go alone. And he did, and he ran all the way there and got there in just one day. And that night at midnight, he got to Inanna's house, and he asked her what he, the king would have to do in order to win this battle against the city of Arata. And Inanna said, it, there was a special pool by the edge of the city where a fish was. Was The fish was a god. And to, in order to beat the city, Enrocker would have to cut down the tamarisk tree that grew by the edge of the pool, make a special bucket, catch the god, and sacrifice it to the Aankar, which was Inanna's sacred battle weapon. And if he did that, then the city of Arata would lose their power source, and Enrocker would be able to defeat the city. And unfortunately, the story kind of almost ends there. We assume that Lugo Banda went back and told Enrocker, and that Enrocker was successful because the next line is that Uruk is now beautifully, lavishly decorated with tin and bronze and lapis lazuli, and all the gods are happy with their shrines. And the story stops. But we know from other tales that Lugo Banda does become king of Uruk. He rules for an impressive 1,200 years, which earns him the title of the shepherd. And he marries the goddess Ninsun, who with whom he has his son Gilgamesh. And that's it for today. We hope you join us for the next chapter of Gilgamesh. Also, what do you think? Do you think Lugobanda was a real, if somewhat larger-than-life character, or completely fictitious? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks!